Anonymous sent three dollars. Call it versus Spencer and Street Fighter LFG. Oh, do you play Street Fighter? <laughs> I don't know that uh, Richard plays Street Fighter. Anonymous sent three dollars. I did when I was really in cool Oh, really? Mark. Are you guys friends? Have they met before? Mark, and, yeah. I don't think we've ever met in person, unless I'm wrong. But we, we haven't met, met in person many times. Time. We used to be politically aligned, but then Richard started making a globo homo centrist cringe takes. And from that point onwards, people in the nationalist movement kind of turned away from him. Uh-oh. Now, wait, now, how would you what is, describe What is globo homo? <laughs> Globalized, homogenized. Oh, I thought you meant homo. That that's what it means. I all right, now, now hold on. I'll I'll, Words I'll, like I'll play this in just a second. I'll go back to all the super chats. Now, how would you describe it, Richard? Of course, you do. You are familiar with each other. Uh, she might not be aware, but how, yes. Well, how would I describe global well, homo? Well, yeah, that or or what he said about you or your what shift. About your relationship dynamic. Is there something here I don't know about? I have no problem with Mark. <laughs> no, I, I look. I used to. Okay. I, I, I'll lay my cards on the deck. I used to really admire Richard. I was a massive supporter of Richard. I used to have him on my show regularly. But of late, Richard seems to have drank the Kool Aid and has been making sort of pretty cringeworthy. Uh, borderline libtard takes he is now a supporter of whatever cause of the month is he's now had his uh, three jabs he supports the ukraine he's got a big nato flag on his wall you know he supports biden supports macron and i believe that richard is basically just a contrarian who likes to say anything at any given time to annoy the people around him that are listening to him and because the general public are no longer listening he's kind of given up on white nationalist talking points and is Hell bent on annoying white nationalists by making centrist or really cringy um, liberal points that make no actual sense to annoy the limited people still listening to him. I think it's very unfortunate because at one time Richard was somebody held in extremely high regard. Mark, what do you think is the most cringe take that you've heard out of Richard? Um, <laughs> probably when he had like multiple jabs. I think he, I think he just had his multiple jabs, and he'd got one of the little stickers yeah. on saying "I'm proud to be jabbed." That was. Oh, I, was uh, okay. I have been vaccinated. Now I have not been boosted. I also um, had a bout of coronavirus, but no, I, I absolutely support getting vaccinated. I think. Do you, no, do you support getting vaccinated? Or do you support the COVID yeah. jabs? You support the COVID what? jabs. Yes. Even absolutely. though they're not vaccinations. Okay, Richard. How are they not vaccinations? They're not vaccinations they're not because vaccinations create a immune response that prevent you from ever being symptomatic or getting the disease again. So when you've had chicken pox, you have an immune, immune reaction. You never get it again. You can take all three of the COVID jabs, <laughs> still get COVID, still be symptomatic, still pass it on. That is not a vaccination by definition. Henceforth, Post these jabs, the World Health Organization have changed the definition of vaccination to meet what these new jabs do to you, which aren't traditional what vaccinations. You're doing, Mark, what you're doing, Mark, is putting it, putting the vaccine on a pedestal in order to knock it off it. So you're basically... No, no. Oh, it's a definition. It's like no, wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Mark, let, me, let, let him answer. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Let him answer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, a, a vaccine is, as you describe it, a way of creating an immune response that will protect you from the disease. And it's not as effective as catching it, um, you know, in the wild. But that is what a vaccine is. Now, is, is, are these vaccines absolutely perfect in terms of stopping contagion? No. Uh, they actually have reduced contagion. Uh, but no, they are not. This is a, a m incredible virus that we were up against that killed a million Americans. And uh, I don't know how many million. Where are we now? Seven, eight, nine million around the world. This was a once in a century pandemic, very similar to the Spanish flu, which was absolutely devastating 100 years ago. Um, so the vaccines were extremely effective in preventing hospitalizations. Um, and death, particularly to the people who are most vulnerable. Now, me, I work out all the time. I'm in my I'm in my mid 40s now. Um, I was probably not going to die of this thing, um, but a and again, I did actually catch it at one point, and my symptoms were very mild. I just kind of was in a funk for a month or so. 
Um, but the idea that the vaccines weren't quite successful in protecting vulnerable people from hospitalization and death is just absurd. I mean, I I don't know what to say. There's no data that would possibly indicate that. Now, you can say, oh, they they lied to us because they said it was going to be a panacea or a quick fix. Fair enough. I mean, the messaging on this was was terrible. But again, that is to pursue a, a rhetoric where you put someone on a pedestal in order to knock him off it. It's like saying, oh, you know, Babe Ruth. Well, I heard he was the greatest baseball player of all time. But look at all these strikeouts. You know, it's not it's it's not serious. You have to look at how was Babe Ruth as a baseball player, and he was actually quite good. Hello, okay, we're joined by some. Well, let me I'll counter what you're here. saying. I'll counter what you're saying. There is data in the UK. This was all calculated. Those under the age of sixty who had no underlying health conditions were about as likely to die of COVID as they were of dying in a road traffic accident. The average age of people who died of COVID in the UK was eighty-three. The average life expectancy in the UK is eighty-two. So, on average, people who were dying of this were much older than um, sixty. They were people with underlying health conditions. They were the morbidly obese. They sure. were people who were diabetic. Yet this jab was largely untested, didn't do what it said on the tin, and was pushed upon the population, children as young as, I believe in the UK, it went as young as 12, who absolutely had no need to get it. For them, it would be like a mild case of the flu. This was largely about power and profit. It was about making huge amounts of money for people who took on government contracts. It was about making huge amounts of money for Pfizer, Moderna, big pharmaceutical companies. And it was a massive power grab for the government. And the government also benefited financially because in the UK it is now emerging that all these massive medical deals that went through on behalf of the government who said, we need to fit out these giant Nightingale hospitals. They built all these giant hospitals for all these people who are going to be needing uh, care, all these people who are going to be dying. Those hospitals never took in a single patient. It was all nonsense. Hospital wards were, in fact, empty. And at the time all this was happening, the people getting these contracts were all in some way connected to the government. So what you're seeing here is something that would have been probably a bad flu season was blown out of proportion and was used so politicians could grab power and a small clique of people who were already super rich could enrich themselves further. And you went along with that. And I think you went along with that. A bad flu season. Yeah. I, I did not, I don't do these things to annoy you all. I mean, I'll, I'll lay my cards out on the table before I ask you a couple of questions. Um, I do not think that the far right of the national nationalist movement is going anywhere. And I do not think worse than that, because that that's, you know, look, am I going anywhere? Good question. Worse than that is that the nationalist movement and far right cannot learn. And they, you call me a contrarian, fine. Maybe there's some truth to that. The nationalist movement will endlessly be contrary to whatever the current thing is, and they won't think through it. So they, whatever you, they see some liberal on Twitter put up, you know, in their uh, profile picture, they will rage against it. And so they raged against COVID, which was an extremely real once in a century pandemic, period, end of statement. A bad bad flu season in the United States with 300, 330 million people is 60,000 deaths. Maybe a really horrible flu season might be 75,000. All right, over a two year period, we had a million. A bad flu season is not 500,000 deaths. But I guess my question for you would be, do you think there should be any public health response? Because all of those things, those criticisms that you put forward are valid in the sense of people who are connected to the government are going to make money. The government's taxing you or taking on debt or just printing money and giving it to corporations. I get it. But that criticism could be leveled at literally any program, every single thing the government does, that is a valid criticism. So do you not believe in the concept of public health? Do you believe that we should have done nothing? 
Well, firstly, I'm gonna, I am going to answer that question, but I want to correct you first because you've made a major, major error in the things you're saying there. In the UK, and I don't know if it's different in America, we seem to be having huge numbers of people dying. You looked then into the statistics and people were saying this many people have died with COVID, not of COVID, but with COVID. And that's a very interesting definition because in the UK, the government was classifying anybody who died within 60 days of testing positive of COVID as a COVID death. So you could get COVID, you could fully recover, you could then go out on a night out, have one too many uh, fruity beverages, run out into the road, get hit by a bus, and you would classify as a COVID death because you were tested positive for COVID within 60 days of dying. And they were also classifying people as COVID deaths who were on palliative care wards. So there were people on palliative care wards who had uh, cancer. If people don't know what a palliative care ward is, a palliative care ward is a ward where people are placed when they are dying. They're never it's like getting hospice better. care, basically, right? Kind of. Yeah, they can only ever be cared for and made more comfortable and life made easier for them before they pass. So they're told, you've got three weeks to live. There's nothing we can do. You're incurable. You're on the palliative care ward. Those people would then get COVID or, you know, reportedly get COVID. And what would happen is that would be listed as a COVID death. Now, that is completely disingenuous. And there have actually been cases in the UK, numerous cases, where families have sued um, Public Health England and the NHS because their relatives were wrongly listed as COVID deaths when they were already on palliative care wards. So what we're saying here is you have a massive overestimation of genuine COVID deaths. I'll give you another example. You would see in papers like the daily mail totally healthy 22 year old woman dies of covid and you'd see a picture and she must have weighed about 30 stone she <laughs> was basically a whale it wasn't she wasn't a perfectly healthy person it was a massive comorbidity and the comorbidity was I, I, get that. I get that. so they over did the statistics they there was a big times article saying in britain no one recovers from covid because at one point anyone who got covid and then died afterwards was actually being recorded as a covid death then they reduced it to 60 days now the point well, being, let, let me respond to this i would like you to answer my question of whether I'm you go, but you, you're, you're saying there were all these deaths and i'm saying the i think the covid deaths were underestimated absolutely the were massive now first off distinctions distinctions have been made between dying with covid and covid and sometimes that's a difficult decision to make. I would remind you during the Spanish flu pandemic, most people did not die of the Spanish flu. They died of pneumonia because they were basically totally weakened due to catching the Spanish flu and they were dying of pneumonia, which is often, you know, it's known as um, the old man's best friend or something like that. It kind of puts you out of your misery as it were. Um, I think COVID deaths were absolutely underestimated because excessive deaths counted on year by year. So this is not looking at the actual causation. It's just simply looking at deaths that you would expect on a kind of actuary, actuary, actuarial, sorry, difficult word to pronounce, actu actuarial basis. And they exceeded what has been reported by the World Health Organization and the CDC. So over a period of time between 2020 and 2021, according to an article in the Times, which is taking CDC data, and, you know, again, it's an actuary account, um, is that they would have expected some 800,000 deaths. There were over 950,000 deaths. So we're having huge amounts of excessive deaths. And in 2020, there was a significant um, uh, fewer drivers on the road. Traffic accidents kill, I don't know, 50,000 people a year or whatever it is in the United States. Um, and that was starkly reduced. People were staying home. They weren't going, doing extreme sports or whatever. So there was a reduction in activity that often leads to death. And there was ex it just, again, brute numbers and increase in actual deaths. That leads me to believe that if anything, things are underestimated. It's a very, it, it was a real thing. You're not engaging in full on denial that I've heard elsewhere. 
to your credit, but you're kind of treating this as if it was just a kind of joke. No, I'm not doing that. I agree that it's very it's a very hard thing to understand because you know, as a you're a healthy guy, I'm a healthy guy. The, the yeah, we are sure we're more today. likely to die in a car accident than a COVID. That that might be true. Um, it seems fair enough. But the fact is, it is it's difficult to contemplate this because it is not this like black death or measles where there's you know 30 percent death rate in extreme contagion it's not like that it's a very subtle disease but one that over a population can be catastrophic which it was yeah it's a very a very uh mild disease i believe for the vast majority of people not for certain age groups yes, not for, for people, the vast majority and, of people but the fact yeah. is when you are locking down the vast majority of people and administrative, administrating largely untested jabs upon them when they don't need them, jabs that do not give them lasting immunity, but you've got all of these people getting super, super rich from it. You've got the destruction of small businesses, the destruction of local economies, the concentration of all the wealth further in the hands of uh, a tiny minority of the global elite, people who run companies like Amazon, etc. people who are part of these, you know, online Line, gigantic companies which are destroying our high streets, destroying uh, local businesses. That's a bad thing. Now, obviously, there does need to be a public health response or something like this. But you said it yourself, this wasn't the Black Death. This wasn't the zombie holocaust. You're not going out into the street and finding bodies piling up. But if you'd have watched anything in the mainstream media, you would think that was the case. You would think that you would be walking out of your door, you'd need a special mask on, and there'd be bodies everywhere. Is a million people more. not a large enough what, pile of bodies? I'm saying those numbers. I mean, what you needed? Flu disappeared. 10 million? The flu disappeared. There wasn't in Britain. Apparently, there wasn't a single flu death when COVID was around. No, because all the flu deaths, which usually amount to about twenty to forty thousand a year, were rolled in with the COVID deaths. To fluff no, the they figures. weren't. There's a clear reason for that: is that we can actually prevent a lot of flu deaths through hand washing and social distancing, and we just simply don't. Most people who catch the flu go to work or to the bus. No, it's no, no. Quite social bad. distancing it's something to think harms about. people. We've now become more conscious of it. Social distancing harms people, especially children. It destroys their immunity. If you look into uh, germ-free living, germ-free living, and this is a scientific fact, germ-free living damages the development of any living creature, especially the young, and it damages specifically their neurological development and their immu immunological development. I, I, I don't disagree with you. And it, you've made some good points when it comes to, now granted they're made in retrospect, but you made some good points when it comes to how this was handled. I think I, I would agree with you to a large extent. I think the masking, um, you know, look, I don't, I don't mind wearing a mask when I go, or I don't have to anymore, but when I went to the grocery store, et cetera. But I agree with you, there was a lot of mass theater going on. And I agree with you that some better decisions could have been made about young people. But that we know in retrospect, when in the moment, if I were in charge, I would have done, I would have absolutely locked down the whole country because who knows there was, you're getting information out of China trickling out. It's weird. You can verify it. We might've had a zombie apocalypse on our hands. In, instead, we had a, a disease that was actually very subtle and difficult to handle. But for the first, say three months, I give the government a complete pass. If I were in charge, I would have absolutely locked down the country because we didn't know the For how long, though? Now, For better how long? decisions could have been made. Of For how long? It's worth because talking about them. Because I was concerned about the disease for about two weeks. Then I was on to what was going on. And I'll tell you this. I didn't wear a mask. I refused to wear a mask. And you're better than this, Richard. You know. You well, know damn well. the are just a nonconformist then. No, no, no. I'm not a nonconformist. What if I, I were in charge? What, if I told you to wear a mask, would you do it? I, if if there was a genuine threat to our safety that well, was clear and present, I would wear You are I not would do a what government official. But the fact is, do you believe the in the sovereignty of the state or are Richard, you some kind of American libertarian? Our enemies or not, have the government spent decades doing the worst thing possible for white people, the worst thing possible for people of European descent? You know they have. And when that's a non sequitur. 
That's a non sequitur. First off, I just to be frank, I don't think they have done the worst thing possible. But I, I get your you're, you're using rhetoric. I get it. I understand there is a level of incompetency in the government. I understand it's that there are regimes it's in place. It's malice. Well, I was I was getting there. I under, first off, there is a lot of incompetency, but regardless of ideology, I agree that there is a kind of anti. Uh, you know, anti-white regime in terms of affirmative action, hiring, et cetera. I get that. But it's a non sequitur to believe that they can't accomplish other things. They can still pick up the trash, even though they, you know, want to promote rainbow diversity, you know, on occasion. They can still actually win wars and be effective that way. Hey, I'm sorry, we're getting there. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> All right, you're not ready to be live streamed. Well, look, I'll say this, Richard. I yeah. think the mask wearing, we were told in the UK, do not wear masks. Masks won't make this any better. It's a complete nonsense. It's absolute pageantry. That's what they said That's for about the first that. three or four weeks. That's what the government yes. said for the first because they were, and then they, said, they were They were lying to you. They were, Fauci had, must have been reading Plato in his spare time. You then they said, to the you must wear the mask or you will get a fine. And at that point, we all looked at each other and said, this is about proving who is the conformist and who is not. And you could see people wearing the mask because they wanted to conform. And do you know what, Richard? You can still go to supermarkets today and see scared, timid people walking around, around with the mask on, absolutely petrified yes. and refusing to go back to normal. And that is what our governments want. They want beaten down people who will conform to any nonsense that they will say and they wanted a metric of how many people were willing to conform they now know how many people were willing to conform because this experiment proved it admirably and sadly you were one of those conformists really which is very disappointing <laughs> maybe let me just let me just I'll, that's I'll fine go speaking. ahead I, go it, ahead it's not he's obviously it's not his no well, he's it's just, just I, it's not um yeah, he's he, just he doesn't need to be honest. Is that yeah, your boy? Fine. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, just having fun. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Oh, and it's just some kid that I picked up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know his name yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> he seems to like me. <laughs> he's very fond of you, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. um... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, you can jump in. Now, go ahead and jump in, oh, and we'll play Super Chats here in yeah. a few minutes. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask, then, since you guys have gotten kind of... Have you guys gotten past the COVID... Stuff, I'm um, guessing. Seems like it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Well, uh, I guess, uh, Richard, what is the most cringe thing that you think Mark believes? Uh, I don't, I don't think Mark is, is too cringe. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, you know, I, I've known about Mark and listened to him for, you know, many years now. Um, and I would agree with quite a bit. Um, I think my general criticism, because I don't want to make it anything personal, my, my general criticism of the right is that due to understandable um, grievances about the government and about liberal journalists and so on, that they fall prey to a certain contrarianism in which they don't ultimately think for themselves but they make a kind of knee-jerk reaction to anything like, say, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, the New York Times like it, likes it, therefore, or the New York Times hates it, therefore we love it. COVID, the New York Times is for masking, we're against it, we're against it, et cetera, et cetera. It's a kind of, we are in total opposition and total resistance. Um, I, I don't, I'm cur I would be curious to learn what he thinks of the recent um, Supreme Court decision that, that affects the United States, of course, and not, not his country. But there's this genuine contrarianism, this genuine desire to join the resistance, which I do not think is intelligent because it is not thinking for ourselves. And I think basically is leading us to fight all of these endless battles that don't actually affect the things that Mark cares about. And if you are in endless resistance to the system, the system will win. 
And I am not interested in just being a martyr and taking up every cockamamie cause. I have, I have a friend who joked about this, and I think it might very well be true. If there were an editorial in the New York Times um, that suggested that eating dog shit is bad for your health, I imagine that many nationalists would start eating dog shit for breakfast every morning as some kind of form of resistance and demonstration of their, they're a sovereign individual and they're fighting the system and all the blue hairs are against this. So we must be for it. The fact is we should think for ourselves and we should try to calculate at what all of these things will ultimately lead to. For one thing, Donald Trump, if Donald Trump had become a COVID fascist, uh, he would have won the 2020 election. There's no doubt in my mind. And he did to a certain degree. His major problem was that he, due to his mouth, was associated with all sorts of COVID denial, uh, weird schemes of, you know, hydrochloroquine or ivermectin, I guess that came a little bit later, and so on. He was on their side, at least rhetorically, and that freaked out a lot of old white people who voted for him in 2016. So you have to calculate, and that's just a you know purely political take. You have to calculate these things and think about what is ultimately serving our interest. I think a more powerful NATO and a neo Cold War is actually serving our interest if you will just simply think down the line and not jump on to some oh there's some massively corrupt um, you know quasi evil petro state that's invading its neighbor we must like them he's the save putin's the savior of western civilization he is not and there are actually some very good things that will come about uh the current situation we're in so it's really about a long-term calculus and thinking for ourselves, and not just reacting endlessly to what the new york you know the new york times says a we say b blue hair blue hair SJW says C, we say D. It becomes contrarian and boring, and it is not, not part of a longer-term vision. Um, and again, all of these battles, I, I hate to break the news to you, but you're going to lose all of these battles. Russia is going to lose. This will be a humiliation for Russia. You know it. The okay. COVID stuff. Uh, well, Russia is doing really poorly and they are facing off against a NATO, which is fully implemented and is going to, at the very least, have a, end up with a divided Ukraine and half, Western half of which will be in NATO. I mean, I, I don't, I this don't was, think, I don't think the right is, I so think, why lose? Think, why endlessly lose? What do you mean, why endlessly lose? What you're basically saying is the most ridiculous and retarded argument I've ever heard. What you're saying is, you, we should give up what we stand for so we stand with our enemies because then we win as well. That's not That's winning. That's not what I'm saying. That giving up what you believe in to adopt your enemy's point so when they implement things that you don't want, you can go, yay, we said that too. That isn't I. Winning. I agree. I wanted COVID restrictions. I want a strong NATO and a neo-Cold War. I'll just tell you, that is what I want. I'm not doing this because I'm a coward. What you want is the latest contrarian hot take that's going to make the average nationalist viewer listen to you. And I don't want them listening. They don't listen to me. This spiral since Charlottesville. And this sort of cumulated with that awful interview you did with that Ellie creature recently, where you sort of apologized for this, you had a go at Trump. You keep saying when Trump lost the election because, well, I can finish that sentence for you. Trump lost the election because of massive coordinated electoral fraud that was covered up by the media. Oh God. I mean, no, see, we're just, I don't believe in any of this How nationalist you, can stuff. Can I ask you a question? They, the nationalists don't listen question, to me. You're this. not really giving me much time to address what you're saying. And I'll say this, Richard. Have you ever been to an election count before? An election count? No. No, I have. I mean, I've I, I said of high election. school. I've been to election counts. And as someone who's been to election counts, 
I have never in my life seen the kind of irregularities that were on show in a widespread number of places, especially in a city areas, that we saw at the last presidential election. And I am not alone. There are entire states that went to the Supreme Court complaining about mass electoral fraud. You can't say none of this happened because this isn't a fringe theory. It's a theory held by the then incumbent who was unseated. It was a theory held by several states. It's a widespread theory because there was clearly mass electoral fraud. It's a widespread theory among QAnon fans, and of course Donald Trump holds it. So what I mean, about the, what about did these better in Detroit than he went, did in 2016? What about the do you, think, do you think Marjorie Taylor Greene was elected by the deep state? Do you think that's what happened? Look, the thing is, Richard, that we was obviously have very different opinions. I am not contrarian to people simply because of their hair color. I'm contrarian to people who have bad ideas. I believe that NATO fomented this war in in the Ukraine because they want regime change in Russia because Putin isn't exactly on side with all of their ideas. I believe they fomented this war in the Ukraine because they wanted to test many of their new anti-tank weapons, which they are currently using this battleground as a testing site for. That's I believe fine if you wanted... believe that. That's simply a disagreement that we have. And, and I, I think there's actually... But I believe a powerful what you're Russia, which stands on a more traditional Christian ground and opposes many of the social democratic degenerate uh, social policies sweeping the West, is a good thing. Because I believe that different uh, competing global powers keep each other in check. And I think the more power... Sure that the West has at the moment, the more of a whip hand, the crooked and twisted Western liberal democratic system has, the more they use that unopposed power to do terrible things to white people and to replace white people demographically and dispossess them of their lands, their rights, etc. And you supported Biden, but since Biden's come in, he's been a disaster. For whatever you think of Trump, Biden has been a much bigger disaster than Trump. Whether you, you, you look this at, just sounds like I'm listening to Fox News. It doesn't sound like you're listening to Fox News. So you want all of the... Yeah, this Biden is literally the most, all that Fox Biden News Biden has the most Jewish cabinet in American history. You want transgender Trump Jews. Trump didn't? You want transgender Well, let's not get into Jews. this. Trump's daughter was Jewish, wasn't she? <laughs> she, she can't yeah, be Jewish. Jewish family. She had a Jewish family, but she's she can't be Jewish because she, she couldn't. Ver- she well, Jewish. she claims she can't conv- that's she can not convert true, to Judaism, actually. But she can't yeah. ever become racially a Jew. You can't be transracial. No, but she practices Judaism, though. She actually, yeah, she may have converted to Judaism. Judaism yeah, I know. Really racially, she's, racially not, she's not. Yeah, I mean, you can't well, convert to race because it comes up on DNA tests. Religions don't come up on DNA tests, Richard. That's yes, it. but the DNA test of Ashkenazi Jews is that they are more than fifty percent European. I mean, it's not a it's not a coherent race in the way that say Caucasoids or Mongoloids are. Um, Weird, this is, when you look at them, place. you can actually see. <laughs> when you can look at them, they do. Not always. That's good. not always true at all. Yeah. You know, the fact of the matter is, when you look at things, I mean, you asked, you, you sort of started talking about, did you mention Roe versus Wade, what I think about the latest abortion thing? Sure, I did mention that, yes. Yeah, go, well, I, go. Think, uh, I think the repe- repealing Roe versus Wade is a good thing. I don't believe yeah. that there should be abortion on demand. Because I'm not a conservative, as I've told you guys over I, I and over again. I think abortion on demand divorces uh, responsibility from action. And if you divorce responsibility from action, you have a nation of ill-tempered babies who think they can do what they want without any repercussions. I also think that un- unregulated abortion, which you now have, leads to horror stories, which you have in certain US states, of abortion up to the day of birth. Well, when you have abortion up to the day of birth, you have literally the horrific case of babies being killed. Because any baby the day before its birth is a viable human being that can live without its mother, which means you have to deliver that baby and leave it somewhere to die. And I am not 
not somebody who thinks that those who wish to deliver living, viable children and leave them in a metal container filled with cold water to die of exposure, that's disgusting. And the people doing it, we would be better off without them. The world would be better off cleansed of people who do monstrous things such as that. So you want these people who do monstrous things such as that to have more children? I want the people who wish to kill fully viable children that can live free of their mothers and kill them in horrific ways, not to hold any power. And ultimately, I would have them removed from our gene pool. Now, I do okay, believe... Well, this, <laughs> I do abortion believe... Abortion does that, by the way. But no, beyond abortion, that, abortion, abortion has been kills, declining it, since it 1980. Kills, Abortion it's, kills babies. Well, look, these horror it stories that you're talking about, these are exceedingly rare. When, when do you think life begins, Mark? Life begins at conception. That's a fact. Yeah, and what is okay, conception? So are you a Catholic? I'm not a Catholic. Life begins at conception, okay. but... Are you Anglican? I'm Church of England. Life begins well, okay, that's what I at meant. conception. Yes. And I do believe that's there should be reasonable... Um, there should be reasonable caveats when it comes to abortion. So... If it is a case of um, abhorrent conception, such as rape, incest, uh, paedophilia, then yes, I do think abortion should be allowed in those cases. I think if you have a case where the child is going to be heavily disabled, I believe abortion should be allowed in those cases. And I also believe that there's a genuine threat to the mother's life, i.e., carrying the baby to term would kill her or put her at reasonable risk of death for through generally medical things not just because she's a loon and you know thinks it's going to give her mental health problems or you know something like what that what is conception to you how would you how would you define that I, look stardust i'm not look, playing the silly game of me okay, being let, let me jump in real quick you can google mark, what conception is it's when a sperm fertilizes an egg mark has a mainstream because he he's put in some exceptions there that are pretty significant particularly i mean uh, i think i was i was looking at statistics last night i did a broadcast on this i think 20 percent of abortions are actually done by married women so this yes this it's strikes actually, me as, yeah and 60 percent of sorry 60 percent of women who seek out abortions already have children Right. So a lot of these abortions, I, th particularly with married women, I, I think they're, they're selecting out um, children with Down syndrome and the like. So, Mark, you've got a, a, a mainstream, reasonable perspective on this. That, that, that's fine. You agree with, I would say, most conservatives. 70% so of the population wants... But that's what I was saying. I'm not some contrary. But that's fine. I that's fine. But I, that doesn't... If I have it's a different right. perspective, I'm not like evil or i'm doing this i didn't to say you were, i didn't say you were evil richard well i know you didn't you say i'm evil but you know what i seem to get quite a lot of pleasure out of taking points that i believe i believe that post charlottesville um you have somewhat lost your way and i like you as a person i've always enjoyed your takes i've always enjoyed you having a show i'm not here to have a go at you but i feel post charlottesville you seem to be of somewhat you know eclipsed in the scene by um National Justice Party and by America First, you seem to have lost your way somewhat and you have been marginalized. And I think you are crying out for people to notice you by making takes that are going to raise an eyebrow from people who once used to listen to you and once respected you. And I, I think that's sad because I do think you are an intelligent man. A number of things, which among other things, is that these people on the far right they are they have antisocial attitudes they want to cause terrible scenes M many not a majority by any means but a strong m minority it's a fraction but they make a lot of hay wanted to go to these events in order to get into fights and they uh, expected that the consequences would be borne by other people so, yes, I have learned some things, which is I don't want to deal with the far right anymore. But, but some that people is are my doing own very well, assessment. Richard. I'm but sure I, you would like, love if, to be. It's like you're mad that I'm left you. No, I no, don't no, want to be mad. involved in the I'm far saying, right. 
No, I'm saying you're mad because you haven't achieved what people like Nick Fuentes has. You'd love to be holding a conference with a thousand plus people in attendance speaking to them all because that's where you flourish. When you were doing that through your organization, you flourished as a person. Your speeches were excellent. The media wanted to talk to you. And that's where you as a man flourish. You blossom. And since you have been somewhat sidelined, I feel uh, Mark, made. I'm going to be just really honest with you, okay? Nick Fuentes is just a little tedious, unbearable person, okay? NJP is stupid and ugly, all right? There it is. I don't want to have anything to do with the far right. You guys, these guys eclipse me because this is the kind of crap that you guys like, all right? No, One no, of the no, reasons Richie, you, why I'm no, not a member of the way. far right because you all have bad taste, I don't but know what to tell you. You did that well and you loved it. You had this now wonderful wait, conference. Because I had. wanted this to go further. None of these things can go beyond like weird cringe posting and what is basically WN 1.0 nonsense. But they have it gone won't further. go beyond that. It will not. Just take my word for it. There is a reason why further. I don't want to be involved with it. But the National Wait, Justice Nick Party really is holding meetings he went with all the way people, to the Capitol. You're people. right. The America you First is right. holding meetings with a thousand people. And you once held, when you were running um, Radix, when you were running the National Policy Institute, you were having incredible events. You were a wonderful speaker. And I you can't were quite do high. those things for two reasons. The first is extreme deplatforming that I faced and I faced to a very large extent, say four years ago, more than most others. The other reason is that the movement does not want me. The movement wants other people. That's fine. I'm okay but, but with Richard, it. I'm I not see mad. your interview with that Ellie where you were basically begging for her forgiveness. And it was terrible because you were saying if the whole movement was based around you, the movement would be better off. And it sounded awful. Yes. And do you it's know what, Richard? Do you know problem. what, Richard? Do you know what, Richard? You would have been better going into that meeting with that odd faced, silly little woman like the old Richard Spencer and saying, you know what? I'm right. I'm right. People of European descent have a right to exist. An odd little liberal journalist like you, you are the problem. I'm not going to do what you want me to no, do, Mark. Why don't you go and do that interview? Do. Take I was advice. very pleased with that interview. Well, I, I, was I and many others were pleased. Ways. And Next. it was the downfall of someone who wants did great things now hold on let, now explain the interview I, for those who don't know what 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 happened with the interview richard i because I, I don't know that everybody knows you did an interview with cnn oh well, sorry no, that's um, cool. well th there were some i mean i did a very long interview i think they took the stuff that was more acrimonious so I, yeah i was i was getting a bit angry with ellie in the sense that it was this like i was fairly and rather honestly talking about the serious problems with the alt-right and there were serious problems the alt-right was going to end up in a bad situation one way or another and like there there were a lot of bad people in that movement there are a lot of bad people that are going to make any type of event very bad i mean charlottesville has been massively eclipsed by what a few people in the alt-right, but it was actually mostly normies hooked on QAnon, did on January 6th. Um, it, these things end up in a situation. I can kind of imagine... I've actually got to go, unfortunately. I have That's another good. stream. <laughs> That's like, I, can, I can almost imagine a kind of multiverse. Like every, these, You see this in comic book movies now, multiverse, where there's like another you out there. I can imagine another Richard Spencer who did exactly what Mark Collette wants. That Richard Spencer will probably be in jail and would be, you know, involved in January 6th and will be yelling hail Trump in 2020 um, and basically utterly destroying his life.
No, Richard. I don't that Richard want Spencer, to be that person. I, that Richard Spencer would have been a highly respected man, speaking to hundreds of people <laughs> at conferences, being part of a community, part of a movement. And instead, the Richard Spencer we have in this universe is one who groveled to some strange-faced liberal journalist who basically. I don't think wants most people saw that interview as groveling. Western society on Mark, its head. Mark, don't well, you think that's a little unfair, though? Because um, well, you're strange asking him. Faced or that he groveled. No, no, no. You're asking him to basically uh, sacrifice his life and his livelihood. Uh, That's what we all must do. If you have a righteous cause, you fight for I'm that no righteous martyr. cause because it's better to live for a day as a lion than it is then to go live be a me. lifetime. Don't as be a sheep. me, Mark. Do you think I'm a sheep? Fine. Go be me. Go be the Richard Spencer that you think. Oh, I want you to be. Ri- I want you. Well, I want you, Richard, to regain your. Well, you're going to be disappointed. Be this is who I am. This is who but I am. Richard, you're going to be disappointed. Are, I'm sorry. You are, but like, you're somebody who you're somebody who wants to be sort of this contrarian. D- no, you're never going to go I, into I, the I mainstream, Richard. You're all you will manage to do. Taking this line is destroy yourself and alienate yourself from the people who once followed you. And for what? To please the liberals that you oppose and you at one time dedicated your life to defeating. And now you're just you're just going along with all of their I, I don't, for what? I mean, I've got to run because I'm actually five minutes late for a stream. I don't want to be in, I think the nationalist movement is a hamster wheel. And but it's feel, flourishing. Let me finish. I, yeah, I don't well, see it as flourishing. Well, Nick Fuentes having a thousand it. people at a ma- at this massive meeting. Go with join Nick Fuentes if that is the kind of stupid nonsense you are into. But you, okay? you, you would love to be speaking. No, no I wouldn't. <laughs> I do not want to be on stage with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gossner or whatever the hell. That is literally the most embarrassing possible thing I could imagine. Or claiming I'm America first and waving a flag and talking about how great Donald Trump is. That is cringe. You supported as Donald hell. Trump. You supported yes, Donald Trump. Yes, and I was we wrong. We all rode the wave I of supported the Trump him train. in a in a particular moment, and I recognized how wrong I was. All right, now, Why were you I, mean, wrong, I don't know you? what to tell you. Why You're you so wrong, mad. Richard? You want to expel me, and I'm like, okay. I'm not trying you to expel, expel you. I'm me to have a conversation because well, as we I can said, have a conversation, but I don't like you being called like, you, oh, you know, well, I'm a loser because well, I, was, I didn't don't say you were like a loser. me anymore. Well, I was going to say, wait, 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 um, I mean, maybe Richard just had a change of heart, right? He went through his thing. And I, again, I know the audience doesn't like Richard to a certain extent, some of the a segment <laughs> there, right? Um, but, uh, and again, you know, we have our differences too. I like Richard because he comes on and he talks and he's a, he, he stirs the, the drink here like I do a little bit. You know what I mean? Like gets people going uh, and he's always a good conversation. Uh, but I, I never thought he was, I don't think Richard's fake. Uh, you know, I think he just maybe uh, has... Had a change of heart, you know, like due to his experiences in the media and falling out with people and well, stuff me, like okay. that. Ralph, just be quiet for two seconds, please. I'll ask you a question, sure. Richard. Did you have a change of heart because you thought your views were actually wrong, or did you have a change of heart because you didn't win? Because that's the important question you have to ask yourself. Because if you're having a change of heart because you didn't win, that's not really a change of heart, that's just painting a face on. No, uh, I, I think it's a, maybe a bit of a, com- com- uh, a, a bit of a combination of that. I mean, when you don't win at something and something leads down a path towards what I view as destruction or failure, like getting off that path is not wrong. But I actually have evolved in certain directions. But one of my major evolutions is recognizing nationalism as a hamster wheel. And you feel like you're getting progress. You're spinning and spinning around in circles. And I don't, I'm not interested in it. I'm too old. I I just, I want to develop intellectually and as a person. And I don't think that is possible in a movement that just really cannot go anywhere and has, I think, really 
faulty instincts that will kind of always lead it to the same place. That's my assessment. You can Bitches. totally Bitches. disagree with me. Fair enough. That's just what Bitches. my assessment is. Do you think I'm lying? Richard, do you know what it sounds like? There's an old phrase. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Hold your head high and smile and say what you really are. Because to me, I would okay, rather fight but it, but it and sucks. lose. I would rather <laughs> fight and lose. I would rather fight and lose than paint on a false mask, pretend to be something I'm not, so I could say that I'm on the winning side. Because fighting and losing and maintaining your dignity okay. as a man, I, that I'm means... defending Richard Spencer, but he's not saying he, he's not doing that. He's recognizing that it sucked, recognizing that it went nowhere, and he's out. But it hasn't yeah. gone nowhere, has it? It hasn't gone nowhere. That's why he's on Cozy right, TV. That's why the NJP are having these he's, gigantic... He's, he's on Cozy? Not, are you on he's Cozy? Not, he's, no, he's not on Cozy. Of that stuff. He's out on Cozy I just now. don't want to do that stuff. I would much rather, like, go to the dentist than do that stuff. <laughs> okay? uh, so can I... Ask a, and I a gotta question. Go. Thank you, oh, Richard. Okay. I appreciate yeah, you, man. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate yeah. you for yeah. saying a little bit. Thank, Thank you. you, man. Stardust gets the question. She's been extremely polite, and that. Oh, no really problem. Good. Um. Uh. So, <laughs> do you feel? Do you feel that Mark is being kind of woke, scoldy with you right now? Do you feel like? <laughs> yeah, the, the the nationalist version of woke scoldy. Yeah, I kind of feel that a bit. The, okay. the other thing, he is basically saying that I'm lying, and I don't appreciate that. I do like Mark still. But I don't appreciate some notion that, like, well, that's why I was I trying to turn that is something bit. else yeah. so that I'm lying. I'm not lying. I'm not saying you're lying. One thing I you won't just do. said part of the reason you're changing well, I, I'm, I'm your opinion is because you didn't win. Spencer to be out. I, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Right, Ryan's always hated me. I believe <laughs> so. Yeah, he's happy. So, so this is Ryan. This is, do you hate him? No. I do you think dislike the him? Rally. Yes, I don't think. <laughs> I, right, it's not, yeah. well, well, I mean, stop talking about like, um, like I had to. I, I learned from Charlottesville. But, but the thing is, that shouldn't be a thing you should learn. Is like the retard rallies, and and then I see January sixth was like the mother of all retard rallies. Right, it was like it was basically yeah. not. I've got to run. Uh, Thank I you, Richard. Don't, I don't. I'm not being. I'm not trying to be Ryan. No, I understand. To Ryan. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll yeah, talk again. Leave. Maybe we'll talk. Leave for another yeah. Ryan yeah. can continue talking. We'll, All right, we'll get you next time. Done. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.